Um, what was the experience like? Was it what you thought a movie set would be? Or what it, was it like the studio trying to meddle in because here they are investing this large amount of money in this iconic franchise and they've gone ahead and made five other sequels to the Texas Chainsaw after the one that came out. None of them are really that good, to be honest. That first one, I'm going to give you a lot of credit. It was one of the earlier horror movies I ever watched. And I have a huge soft spot for horror movies. They're just one of my favorite genres. How did that all go? Like, was it what you expected or what exactly happened? Well, your, your tender age kind of like um, betrays, you know, the, it does. The, the achievement. Because, you see, I believe that horror movies at a certain point all become the same. And it's the first 10 that you watch that, I mean, the scares, the mechanism. You know, uh, Cabin in the Woods makes a good, uh, good point. Makes a good point for that. They, they show you, that, like Penn and Teller, they show you... Uh, the tricks, they show you their hand. This is how we do that, you know? And then they have fun with that. So that was pretty unique, but otherwise everything kind of follows a certain tried and proven template, right? Uh, especially the Six Kids in the Woods kind of movies. Oh yeah. And, and um, so I believe that whatever you see first, before you know the vocabulary, before you know the tricks, those are the movies you know, you talk to anybody of my generation, it will be The Exorcist, The Omen, Rosemary's Baby. You know, it's always the same ones. Now you talk to the younger generation, they said, oh, you know, I was scared to death watching House of Wax. You know, I don't know what, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and sometimes that still happens, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, but it's the, first, the first set that got thrown in you always seems to be the freshest, even though it's all out of the can to a certain extent, you know. In transitioning from Texas Chainsaw, you also had a chance to work on Friday the 13th. Here's this mega franchise as well, where they're trying to reboot it or remake it to a whole new generation. What were the lessons that you learned that you took over to that from Texas Chainsaw, especially in making a horror movie? Mm, well, um, there are many answers. To, you, you learn so much doing them and you know so little while you're doing them. In hindsight, you, you know much more. Um, one thing that combines them all that I find interesting for all those that want to start their own franchise and are listening in is uh, what I learned from the writers because the writers are the true fans. Yeah. Um, much more authentic friends than I am because, you know, for me, it was just like something I watched. I mean, none of these movies meant for me what The Exorcist means and none of my movies should mean anything like The Exorcist either, right? That was for me the high watermark of what a scary movie should be. But what I found out when I talked to the writers, they never referred to Jason or to Leatherface as the villain. They called him, he's our anti-hero. They all used that term. And the villain was usually the good looking blonde guy who's a <laughs> jerk and doesn't collaborate, you know, and everybody dies. Um, that's the true villain, you know? It's the weakest link in that survival game, right? But, but the rest, they're, they're anti-heroes. And if you look at them, they were all slighted. They were all wronged, yeah. right? And they, they had to come around. In fact, there were two scenes in Texas Chainsaw Massacre that they wanted me to throw out. And I got the least into... Oh, yeah. ...any movie I've done. Uh, but those, there were two scenes that they were gunning for. One was where Leatherface takes his mask off to put the camper mask on and you see his destroyed face. You know- Yeah, kids, I remember that. Yeah, kids were making fun of him in school and, and now he's wearing those pretty kids' faces to recreate an identity he has lost, right? That's what that shot meant to me. And the other one was when his proverbial parents are fighting, ironing the pants down in the living room, He's up in his kid's den, like a little child chewing fingernails, listening to the half open door, right? He's kind of like a child. And, 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 and clearly they were gunning for it because of a sort of a vulnerability, but, but Jason and Leatherface have that vulnerability. Uh, Jason drowned while the camp counselors were, were fucking each other, right? So, so uh, nobody took care of him. And he was like a, 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 a um, you know, a, a disadvantaged child, right? Right. They're, they're, they're in, I think, lies the secret of a, of a great franchise. 